My name is David Gunkel. I'm professor of communication technology at Northern Illinois University. And I teach courses uh, related mainly to web design and programming and sort of information technology related things having to do with automatic systems, autonomous uh, uh, environments and uh, that sort of business, mainly with an emphasis on ethics um, and uh, social uh, impact. So my most recent book, uh, which is called The Machine Question, is really asking two related questions. One question is when are machines going to be responsible to us for their actions? So in other words, we live in a world now where machines more and more are taking on responsibilities of making decisions and affecting us in very real ways uh, that affect our finances, the way we live, where we live, whether we get a, a, a loan for a mortgage or a car, whatever the case is. So it, in every mundane kind of activities, machines are taking action in our world. And the question becomes, when do those machines have a kind of responsibility to us? When would it make sense to say, for example, it's the machine's fault if something goes wrong, instead of a human being that operates the machine? So that's one part of the question. The other part of the question has to do with if indeed machines start to be responsible agents for their actions, would we ever be responsible to them? Would there ever be a reason to talk about something like machine rights? And if there is, why would we want to do so? Um, what sorts of machines would we want to grant rights to? And what would granting rights to machines mean in a world uh, where they are social interactive objects uh, that exist in our world and with whom we would have a relationship? So that's really in a nutshell what the machine question is. It's looking at both sides of that moral question, the responsibility part and the rights part. The whole case of Archos is really the moral puzzle that I try to work with in my own book and my own work. But it has two components. One is um, you have this super intelligent AI that has actions taken and, and it gets to be dangerous because of various things it could or could not do. And as a result, the question becomes, well, should a machine like that be programmed with a moral sensibility? And is that possible? Is it possible to make morality computable, where you could have a machine that would behave in a morally sensitive way to human beings? And that has to do with machine responsibility. And the flip side of that is, okay, once you make that machine and you endow it with these kinds of abilities, does it have any right to its continued existence? Can you just unplug it? can you just toss it out? I mean, right now, we don't worry about our iPad, right? The iPad starts to function weirdly, it breaks, and at that point, it's a disposable object, you can just get rid of it. But if you created a super intelligent AI like you have with the character of Archos, then the question becomes, is it disposable? Um, is it, at a certain point, able to have a claim to its own sustained existence um, that would be on par with another human person? So the real operative question in sort of moral thinking is, when does something like that become a person? Now, we normally think of persons as being like you and I, human beings. But recently, we've extended the label person to things that are not just human beings. So for example, dolphins are now persons in Indian law. You cannot have a dolphin in a zoo because it is harmful to that person. And so the Indian court has decided that Dolphins are people, and because they're people, they have moral rights and we have responsibilities to them. In the United States, we've decided, for better or worse, that corporations are people. So we now treat corporations as having a right to free speech, which means they can spend as much money as they want on political advertising, right? Just like you and I would. And they have the ability to be, to be libeled, right? They can sue you if you use their uh, name improperly. And so in current contemporary society, person now is a much broader category. It's not just human beings that are people anymore. Some animals are people, corporations are people. And the question is, well, when would a machine become a person? What sort of intelligence would we have to endow the machine with in order to qualify as being a full person? I don't have the answer to that question, but I think that's what's being played out in the novel. You know, when and if Archos ever becomes a person, would we have that responsibility to Archos the same way we would to other persons, whether human persons, animal persons, or a corporate person. His, his understanding and relationship to humanity is really complex. I think one of the things that makes the character of Archos so intriguing in the novel is that he's not just evil. 
I mean, he's not just the bad guy who does bad things and hates people. There's a certain sort of understanding of, you know, what humanity is about and about what its uh, possibilities are, but also about what its failures are. And there's a kind of attempt to improve it, right? To, to, make an, a, to make a better version, to be the next step of evolution. And this is not far-fetched. There's a number of actual roboticists People like Kevin Warwick, people like Ray Kurzweil, um, all you know, well-funded roboticists working in science currently, who are talking about our next evolutionary step being robotics. That at some point, the machines we create may surpass us. And then the question becomes, well, what do they do with us? What, what is our future? looking like at a time in which we become obsolete, for lack of a better description. So I think that is a lot of what is going on with that character in, in the novel and, and the way in which he plays out. Uh, we can call him a he, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure of his gender, but, but obviously, you know, we, we speak of him as a he. Um, but what that means in terms of uh, both the novel, but also in terms of our social reality.